Hello, I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley, and I'm her daughter, Dr. Heidi Horsley. Heidi and I want to welcome you to Open to Hope Conversations, the podcast. We believe that the greatest gift you can give yourself after a loss is hope, using this moment to connect with others who have not only survived, but thrived. So let's get started. Welcome to the Open to Hope show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria Horsley, with my daughter and co-host. Dr. Heidi Horsley. Well, Heidi, we're going to have an interesting show today because we're going to be talking about life and death and how they're two sides of the same coin, is what our guest tells us. And she has been studying intently on life and death issues and religion and has had a very interesting journey. And I think you're going to get a lot of good advice and tips from her on how to maximize your life after you've had a loss. So Heidi, would you like to introduce our guest today? Sure. So mom, today we're talking with Claire Goldsberry. She has published numerous articles on spirituality and religion. She is a practicing Buddhist and she has written numerous books, including The Illusion of Life and Death, Mind, Consciousness and Eternal Being after her partner Brent's illness and death. Welcome to the show, Claire. Thank you, it's nice to be here, I appreciate it. It's wonderful having you on. Now, as I understand it, you can correct me, you had really had a study of Buddhism, had feelings about life and death, and were kind of feeling pretty comfortable with your philosophy and how things were. And then your life partner, Brent, died. And you not only had to talk the talk, but you had to walk the walk. What has helped you? Well, initially, uh, my reaction when Brent got the diagnosis of esophageal cancer was one of shock. Uh, I think I was more shocked than he was. He was a very uh, go with the flow kind of person. He was very fearless person. He'd done a lot uh, in his life, um, had been a, a hockey player, had lost some teeth. <laughs> so <laughs> I think you have to be pretty fearless to get out there and, and be a pro hockey player. But uh, I think the shock for me, and you're right, I did study uh, Buddhism. I studied a lot about death because in Buddhism, we learn a lot about death. It's nothing that we are afraid of. At least that's the theory. You're not supposed to be afraid of, of death. We meditate on our own death. There is a meditation called meditation on our own death, where we visualize our own death and visualize that dying process. And yes, one of the, one of the mantras is remember death every day, because in remembering death, we have a better life. That's, that's the theory, but of course it takes practice. To is that is life. that because Claire, the reason we have a better life is because we realize that life is short and that we appreciate every moment that we're here? Well, not just that life is short, but that all is impermanent. Mm -hmm. To learn the idea that nothing is permanent in the phenomenal world, that everything changes and how we adapt to these changes. And sometimes we're asked to adapt quickly. Like when we're given a diagnosis of a terminal illness, either ourselves or our loved ones, we have to learn to adapt very quickly because life can change in an instant. But if we have already practiced the idea that all is impermanent, that change is a part of life, that we shouldn't expect life to be the same every day, that we can always anticipate one thing and that is life will change. Then I think we can adapt more easily and more quickly when things like a terminal diagnosis uh, becomes a realization, really hits us right in the face like it did for me. Brent adapted better than you did. Absolutely. <laughs> and he really didn't have any kind of a, a, a particular life philosophy other than just, hey, I just live life. I just go with the flow and, you know, and, and yes, he did adapt better than I did. And maybe that's because 
his own father died when Brent was just 16. He died of stomach cancer. Oh. So, you know, maybe there was already some of this realization that he had that, yes, life can change in an instant. Hmm. Wow. Yes. So tell us about you. I've often told people that it was really those, those studies, those Buddhist studies that, you know, once I got over the initial shock, I thought, okay, now that I'm being called to really practice, as you say, really walk the walk, um, because now I'm confronted with the realization that yes, life is impermanent. Life does change. Uh, it can change in an instant, but how do we walk that without fear? Uh, and I think Brent. And, and let me ask you, what would the fear be? Oh, I think everyone fears death. I think all sentient beings fear death. Uh, from the tiniest ant, when you put your finger down in front of an ant and they turn and run the other direction, I think all sentient beings fear death. It's this maybe the mystery of where do we go after death? Maybe even the mystery of what is death? How do I die? What survives death? There's this whole group of mysteries that surround the idea of death. We think we know what life is. Maybe, maybe not. As, as I've learned, I, uh, life is not often what we think it is. But I think the mystery of death and the dying process, because generally most religions don't talk about it. They don't talk about it in the way that, say, the Eastern philosophies do of Hinduism and Buddhism. Um, and I think that, that that, once I got over that initial, whoa, uh, a shock, that I was able to, to put what I had learned into practice. And I think Brent led me along that way because he was so fearless. He was very nonchalant about the whole thing, actually, mm -hmm. uh, which amazed me. But uh, it also helped me uh, get past the fear and learn to really practice what I had been learning. So... Did you have community that you did it with? No, um, I pretty much did it all by myself. At the time, I was just studying by myself and um, just, you know, I had a, a whole range of books, including the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying that I, you know, turned to and just kept on learning, kept on studying, kept on contemplating, meditating. Um, and learning to uh, overcome the fear by knowing and understanding that all is impermanent, that life is just from birth to rebirth. That's all it is. And, and what's in between is up to us to, to learn and to grow and to become spiritually uh, adaptable to what happens in life, to all these experiences that we are called to have. Now, uh, this is all really, um, do I wanna say it? So it's very lovely in the thought. And I, I'm wondering if I'm watching this and I'm suffering after a loss and I am afraid, do you have any suggestions of where I'd start? Well, suffering is a natural part of our life. Uh, and I always go back to the Four Noble Truths of the Buddhas with what the Buddha taught when he achieved enlightenment. And the first one was life is pain and suffering. And a lot of people think that's very negative, but I found it very helpful uh, because if we, if we don't have expectations that life is going to be changeless and, and there's never gonna be any suffering and everything's gonna be forever, uh, then that's when we suffer. Because the second noble truth, the Buddha said, you only suffer when you want life to be different than it is. Mm -hmm. And I remember when Brent was, uh, was close to death, he, he lived for 18 months, which was very long for esophageal cancer, but he didn't, uh, he only choose, chose to have surgery. He didn't choose um, other treatments. 
And he said, you know, if anybody asked whether or not I suffered, because people are always concerned, you know, did he suffer? Did, you know, uh, and he said, tell them no, because I never wanted life to be different than it is. And that was just something right off the top of his head. But I'm going, well, that's the Buddha's second noble truth, that you only suffer when you want life to be different than it is. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's I'm pretty impressed that Brent had all these beliefs. And I mean, he just kind of, he almost accepted just where he was in his life. He didn't try to fight with reality and wish it away and wish it was different. He just leaned into it. You're exactly right. He did not. He just, he was, like I said, he was kind of a go with the flow kind of guy. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever, whatever arose, he just accepted it and went on, uh, you know, whether it was, you know, issues at work or, um, you know, a personal life with his family, uh, the, the things that he had to deal with. He just, it, things just didn't bother him. And it truly was amazing. It truly was. But it taught me that, yes, you know, this that I've been studying and, and pra practicing, trying to practice, uh, really began to mean more to me because of his attitude toward life, toward his life and the, the path he was called to walk. So it sounds like after his death, as you were grieving, you utilized some of these principles to, to get you, you know, through the grief part and to find hope again and right right uh, grief is a part of it obviously you know we grieve uh when we suffer a loss uh, because we miss that other person uh, mm -hmm. or we miss you know our pets or we miss you know the loss of anything mm -hmm. um and yet the fear factor uh is not there anymore that's the thing i noticed um i once read that all fear is rooted in the fear of loss you know, we're afraid that we're going to lose our partner. We're afraid that we're going to lose, you know, you know, our child, our parents, our pets, whatever it is, you know, our money, our material possessions. Um, and I really took that to heart that, that all fear is rooted in the fear of loss. And if you accept that all is impermanent, that everything changes, then you, you don't have that fear anymore because you don't have that fear of loss because you don't become attached to all of these things. You have no expectations that everything is going to be around forever, exactly as you want it to be. And you have that realization that all is change, all is impermanent. Well, it sounds to me like if someone is watching this show that the first place you can start is by getting Claire's book. The Illusion of Life and Death, Mind, Consciousness, and Eternal Being. I think that would be a great place to start. So Claire, tell us where people can get your book and do you have a website? And I do. I have a website and it's clairegoldsberry.com. Uh, just my first and last name, all one word, uh, C-L-A-R-E. G-O-L-D-S-B-E-R-R-Y.com. And the book can be uh, purchased from any bookseller, uh, independent booksellers, Amazon, wherever you like to buy books, the, the book is available. And I, I really hope that people enjoy the book and get a lot of meaning out of it. I teach classes. Um, I teach introductory classes to Hinduism and Buddhism, along with other uh, traditions as well, but uh, mostly Hinduism and Buddhism. And hope that that helps people understand life and death. I include the quantum physics part of it in there too, because as I learned when I started studying the science of quantum physics, there is a very parallel path between the Eastern philosophies and quantum physics in the way they look at, at life um, and what life is and the fact that all is illusion. And where do you teach your classes? I teach them at the Rio Salado Community College. I've also taught them at Paradise Valley Community College, just as, um, as uh, you know, ongoing types of, you know, adult education kinds of classes. And uh, it's, been, it's been very interesting and a lot of fun. I enjoy teaching. Well, thank you so much for uh, your mind and what you're doing and the way you're bringing these things together. It's very inspirational and I know it'll help a lot of people find hope.
Well, thank you very much, Dr. Horsley. I appreciate it. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you so much, Claire. And thank you so much for, you know, your example. And we can find hope again. Like you said, life is full of adversity and it's full of loss. And change is the one thing that we can depend on because our lives will change. That they will. <laughs> and thanks, everybody, for joining us on the show today. And Heidi and I always want to remind you that if you've lost hope, please lean on ours until you find your own. And God bless. I'm Dr. Heidi Horsley. You have been listening to Open to Hope, the podcast. You can follow Open to Hope on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. To learn more, visit us at opentohope.com and go to Apple Podcasts to subscribe. I'm Dr. Gloria Horsley. Join us again next week for another Open to Hope conversation, where we invite you to lean on our hope until you find your own.